All right, guys, Shoddy T here with the Alliance War video. First war of the new season, season 25. Uh, we got big aspirations to be Platinum 3. And to start off, we get a pretty good test against an opponent that finished Platinum 3, AGT Alliance Pink. Uh, they have a pretty big Alliance family. They have multiple, like, uh, sub-alliances. I think the highest one. I think finished in the Masters last season, so they're so they're pretty formidable opponents. It was a pretty good test out the gate, but I think we're up to the task here. So, as usual, highlighting the opponents that I plan on fighting, and based off their placement, it's going to be a lot of quake fights. So, just giving you guys that heads up, and we're actually going to be taking the left side at minis this time because I have quake because she's not as viable on the right side. And so, yeah, so we got a pretty big slate here. So, as I mentioned, Quake's going to be one of my attackers. We're going to also use Storm Pyramid X for a couple of fights. And then we're going to use Magic for the boss fight. And I think one other fight as well. So, to start off, we have a Mole Man. So, this is going to be a Storm Pyramid X fight. For guys that are not familiar with the Mole Man's ability, he starts off in, if I'm not mistaken, he starts off with True Strike, or he has some mechanism that basically nullifies Evade. So, um, so Storm Pyramid X is a better option because of his ability to sometimes shrug off debuffs. Um, or not, de well, debuffs, but stuns in general, particularly in this case. If an opponent tries to shrug off a stun, she replaces it with a passive stun. So, so that makes her a pretty great counter for him on this node. But it's going to be a dynamic to this fight, other than me just getting hit. Uh, rule number one, if you want to be good in the highest war attack, don't get hit. So that's, that's one. But... But you see that true, that little purple circle there, that's the true accuracy that I was talking about. So if I would have used Quake, I would not have been able to Quake and Shake. So that's the reason why I didn't bring her. But one dynamic is going to really complicate matters that I totally forgot about. Uh, and you'll, you'll see it. You're going to see it. So it's going to make this fight become uh, much difficult. So... As you see, I triggered three stats protection from that special. So now I'm dealing next to no damage. So in order to get rid of that protection, I'm going to have to intercept him. But intercepting Mole Man is, is pretty tricky. I mean, you're, probably, you're more reliable to do it when he's in the corner. As you can see, he passively shrugged off my parry, so he got passively stunned. But... I'm hardly doing no damage now. So I have to find an opening where I can do a backdraft intercept and then I try to punish his SP2 too soon. Uh, so I get very nervous at this point. Now I'm dealing like zero damage and now he has another stack of protection. Like he's still at 25%. I'm like, uh, am I fighting a brick wall? That I could have intercepted there, but it's it's just so, it's tricky. So I'm trying to push him in the corner without hitting into his block. Just trying to dance around with him the best way I can. But now I just may have to just try to do a backdrop intercept from the middle of the screen. And he didn't do it. He didn't comply. Luckily, I was able to recover to block. I tried to intercept there, but he retreated. So I'm really trying to. Okay, so we got him pushed in the corner now. So now I just need him to throw his SP2. And then we're going to try to do a backdraft to get rid of some of those protection stacks. So I'm dealing zero damage. We got a, we got one, but we're still not out the woods yet. Still dealing no damage. Zero, zero. I miss. Okay, now we finally got rid of all the protection. Now we're going to throw this SP3 and get this fight over with. So that fight on paper started out pretty well. But once I threw that first SP2... Things just went down the drain. So, note to self, do not throw an SP2 
against Mobile Man on this note or with any protect character with Storm Pyramid X. Just throw SP3. For some reason, that doesn't trigger protect. So, um, so yeah, so that was a pretty intense fight off the gates. So, next fight is going to be standard quaking. So, now quake on this ebb and flow knockdown, um, the way it works here is just you simply knock down the opponent and protection is gone unfortunately it doesn't work that way on the second set of ebb and flow because those are intercept nodes but the ebb and flow knock down just happened to be perfect with me just it's, it's just perfect with me just doing this here um if it was a way that i can apply concussion after intercept on the other node then i can get rid of protect there too but unfortunately that's not the case so really this is, ends up being a standard quake fight and it's really not much to see here just a reminder that when you're quaking and shaking recognize the opponent's second medium and their fourth light attack in sentinel's case his second medium is that double push right there and as you can see he tried to finish a combo um and this fourth light is that that last swing that came across his right um but usually so there's that double push medium second medium there and he's done so so far so good now we got hulk buster once again we're going to use quake um like i said it's gonna be a lot of quake fights i had to just i had to just double check one thing here because i I know as a defender, Hulk Buster gets extra benefits. I just wanted to make sure he didn't have any type of um, he didn't have any type of situation where I couldn't evade. So I saw that enemy attack suffer twenty negative twenty percent offensive ability accuracy. So because of that, it gave me a slight pause. So I wanted to duel this guy real quick just to make sure. So. Um, so we're gonna just do just do a quick duel, and guys, I recommend using your duels. Um, you get five free duels a day. Unfortunately, there are no more duel uh, credits that they give, but five free duels a day give you a chance to practice certain things, quaking or whatever. Well, you can practice quaking in the realm of Legends of uh, Winter Soldier, but here. I just wanted to make sure that I can quake and evade every time, and it looks like that's the case. Um, so, so I'll just finish the rest of this fight to get the free battle chips instead of quitting the fight. So, so this is just a small lesson. Always duel. Um, I usually duel at times to determine. Nowadays, I'm dueling to determine if an opponent has willpower. Especially if I plan on bringing Warlock or if I see an opponent that one of my teammates have that's going to be tricky that Warlock is a great counter towards like Immortal Abomination that's like the main one so so I do for willpower sometimes I'll duel if someone potentially has limber even though that's not as relevant nowadays uh, also I duel for missing dispersion in some cases to see how much EMD someone may have, assuming that their top champ is a mystic champ. Um, dual for suicides, but sometimes you can just look at the PI of the profile to see if they have suicides, even though they can deceive you at times by taking it off uh, before they place and then putting it back on after they place. So you never really know. But the main use for dual nowadays is mainly uh, willpower at least for me but also just occasionally if there's an opponent that you're not 100 percent sure how their dynamic works against a certain champion you can duel just to just to double check so and i always like to use a four star or a three star to duel just to simulate the degree of difficulty of a longer fight and it's too easy to duel an opponent with a five-star quake like they'll be dead after two aftershock charges so that's no fun so you if you want to duel try to test yourself with a higher degree of difficulty with a three or four-star champ um, unless there's one specific thing you're trying to find out where you can just duel with anyone 
So that fight is over. All right. So now it's time to apply the big boy boost. Gonna use these sporadically throughout the, the season. Not every war is gonna require me to use the 30% attack and champion boost. And plus I have the the regular one hour ones if I need to, if I want to space my energy much better. So, um, so that's what we're gonna do here. Gonna quake this Nick Fury. Now, a couple of things I have to focus. Actually, I think, I don't even think I ended up using Quake for this fight. I started to use Quake. But then I said, uh, we'll use Storm Pyramid X. So, he can be Quake, though. I, I could have Quake this fight, but it was a couple of things that I was concerned about. Um, like the backup recovery. Um, well, I could I could have fought that fight. I just wanted to be extra careful using Storm Pyramid X. Plus, I got a lot of Quake fights on the horizon, so don't have as many Storm Pyramid X fights. So I said I can spare her for this. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to bait as little, as few SP1s as possible. Um, unfortunately, he threw one there. Now she does have that glancing, so not all hits are going to uh, deal with their full block damage or direct damage if I get hit. Bless you, bless you. All right. So we're just kind of dancing around right now. Um, we're trying to just bait SB2s. And I was trying to time it to where I throw my SB2 um, after his second life starts. So that's why you'll see me throw SB1s here and there. So my guess is I probably throw another SB1. So there we go. But that one had a couple of crits. So, but it's, it's not all that bad. I'll probably, I'll have to hit him a few times um, in his second life before I throw my SP2. So I throw a short combo to get him at 1%. So that way I can throw another combo once his second life starts, bait the heavy. And now we're at two bars of power. So now we're just gonna dance around. We're gonna bait the SB2, of course. And just let him kill himself. And then we'll launch SB2 once he's at 30%. But he's backing me up to the corner. All right, so now this should just about kill him. But he's not quite there yet. But we're getting there. and. And I got myself intercepted there <laughs> with this heavy attack, a heavy intercept. That was a, it's bad timing there, but we finished them off. All right, so now we got a cork. And this is one of the main reasons why I brought Storm Pyramid X. I can I can quake this fight. You've seen me quake it before, but it is a pretty stressful fight. So this is more tailor made. As I mentioned, if an opponent shrugs off a parry attempt, they get passive stun. As you can see, he's he's getting he's definitely uh shrugging off every parry thus far. Alright, so and now we got the slow debuff. Uh, not the slow, but the cold snap from the SP1, which means the mix master is pretty much nullified. So she's just a perfect court counter for this node. Don't need to bring white Matt Nito for the pre fight, so that saves a roster spot. But I don't, don't always get a chance to bring Storm Pyramid X. I get hit right there and I get hit again, but um, we end up recovering ourselves. Yeah, but I don't, I don't get a chance to bring her very often into war. And as you can see, I trigger protect once again, so I have to get like a, have to get like a cheeky intercept to make sure I can hit him. 
I mean, the SP-1 shouldn't really hit that hard, but apparently it hit them hard enough to trigger protection. Alright. Yeah, so my Korok Dex is kind of shaky, so I had to block the second one. So now we're in Assassin's Reign with Trigger Protect once again. At that time, that was a clean Dex. But luckily, Assassin's Reign is bypassing the protection at times. So as a result, the damage is still in full at a higher attack rate. So next we got an Apocalypse. Now this is a very great placement. There are very few counters to this guy on this node, but the one that works by far is Magic, but there's caveats. Pretty much have to use a Power Start Boost and a, that's, that's really it. You don't have to use a Mystic Power Boost or Mystic, yeah, you don't have to use any of the Mystic Boosts, but I decided to do it just for good measure. I think I had one in over, well, actually, I think I used, I used the 150% one. I think I saved the 200% one for the boss fight. But this is a precursor of what you're gonna see in the boss fight. Now, what I purposely did, I tried to see if Limbo would trigger at the beginning, but it didn't. So I immediately just retreated. If, if it triggered, I would have purposely took a combo to the face. All right, so we got that. We're gonna trigger protection, but I can backdraft pretty easily with her while he's in the corner and get rid of it pretty reliably. But right now the computer's not quite dancing with me. But that's fine. I'll use armor break to heal myself from the node. There we go. So this probably ends up being the easiest fight of the war. All right, almost done. There we go. Take too long to attack, I'll heal myself with that willpower. And he's down. All right, so other than a couple of hiccups with Storm Pyramid, that's we're off to a flying start. So once again, we got another Nick Fury. Now this is Ebb and Flow Intercept. And once again, I probably could have quaked this fight, but I, I was definitely worried about the, because Quake against Nick Fury is already a long fight. So it'll be even longer if I apply the, um, if with this protection, the 60% protection. So this is a Storm Pyramid X fight. And luckily, Nick Fury, he's not a large attacker. So I don't have to worry about triggering protection. But unfortunately, I make a mistake right there. I took a combo to the face and unfortunately, and just like computer fashion, they went to the mat. They did the five hit combo light ender. If it was a heavy, if it was a medium attack ender, um, I would not have bled, bled nowhere near the amount of bleeding I would have done. And plus, I probably would have healed off of it. But that that second, that fourth light attack, yeah. So we're we're behind the eight ball. I mean. This is a mad scramble to try to get a one shot. If I if I'm gonna get a one shot, I'm gonna have to gonna have to start right here. So that was a pretty good SB2 there, but we're still not out the woods. So we're we're trying to, and we don't really have a lot of blocks. So we obviously can't bait SB ones. We're trying to do shallow evades to bait heavies. So I did a. I used the parry there, I'm trying to push in the two bars of power. Like I said, I probably got like two or three parries left. And when he gets to his second life, I probably I won't be able to parry him at all because that fury is just gonna add to his attack rating. I may have one, maybe. Let's 
so all right so we're so we got a nice clutch intercept there we get one more parry now we're trying to push them over two bars of power once again we're gonna hold that sp2 in reserve all right so now i'm starting to feel good i just need to get one intercept and throw that sp2 and we can kill this guy I probably should have punished that SB2, but I was trying to do one of those intercepts from a distance. I'm not quite getting it. And so what I ended up trying to do is do a back, a wall intercept, and I was too late. So I had my opening. I could have I could have done it, but fortunately, messed up. So now I'm going to bring in Quake to finish him off. Now I can, I can Quake this much. <laughs> I mean, five minutes to finish off his second life is plenty of time. So, but if I would have quit this, had to quit this fight from the very beginning, I, I think I would have timed out. And I get hit again. Luckily, that concussion kicked in because who knows? He probably would have did another five hit light ending combo. And that definitely would have killed me because of the class disadvantage. So, got a little fortunate with the concussion there. Um,. But we end up composing ourselves for the rest of the fight. All right. I said it's very slow. So I mean, we're a minute into this fight. I probably got rid of what, five, like ten percent health, and some of that was decayed health before he got to thirty percent. So imagine the pace when he wasn't decay. If he wasn't decaying, I probably would have timed out in his first life. So, so yeah, quaking this fight wouldn't would not have worked, and trying to fight against him normal like to combat the node would not have worked either because every hit would have put a tactical charge on him and that just would have made the degree of difficulty even greater and it would be kind of stupid to do that with a person with a class disadvantage to not use their strength against them which is in her case just quaking otherwise I would have brought magic and I probably could have used magic for this fight in hindsight because he, he she's a pretty decent matchup for him. Um, but we still finished that fight. All right, so now we got a Nova. I've had some bad experiences with magic against him because of that random um, parry, auto block, or stun shaking off he had like weird quirkiness I figured out some of that stuff but I didn't want to take any chances because magic is the boss counter so I wanted to keep her health as topped off as possible and decided to just go ahead and use quake I'm not sure why I used the um, combat regeneration boost but we used it anyway just to be safe. Uh, so in this case, I don't really have to worry about the protection. I mean, it's enough. I got more than enough time. If it was a three minute timer, I'll be a little worried, but five minute timer, you can you can quake a protection node. Now, when they originally had this new setup, they had it where it was 90% protection where that made it impossible to quake fights, but that 60% protection, it's almost like your damage is cut in half, but normally quake fights are like a minute long, maybe a minute and a half. So if your damage is reduced by 60%, that means that quake fights are usually like two and a half, three and a half minutes tops. And then if, unless you got like a champ that has like high physical resistance, like Red Hulk or um, Awakened Rhino, then you're risking timing out. 
Um, so, but this fight here is pretty, we're a minute and a half in and he's lost two thirds of his health. So basically this is on pace to be done in um, like two minutes and some change. So, so he'll be done. He'll be down before the two and a half mark. He'll be down less than half of the time. So if it was a three minute fight, I still would have finished him, but I would have had about 40 seconds, 50, 50 to 40 seconds left. So in this case, I'll have roughly 250, yeah, 258. So just over two minutes for that fight with 60% protection. So if you got a tricky opponent in this path, I recommend using Quake. So especially at a mortal abomination. <laughs> so because he's properly placed right there that I just fought. So we got Guillotine 99. And guess what? Another Quake fight. So now this is in the morning after we wake up. I actually I fell asleep. <laughs> I could have taken this fight with that six hour boost before I went to bed. But I literally fell asleep. So... So, of course, I got to use this boost. But the thing about me waking up is that at least um, I don't get Folgers in my cup. Unfortunately, I don't drink coffee. But the good thing about waking up is that I have full energy in war. So, I can just use this one-hour boost to get through all these fights leading up to the boss. So, what I do there is just a little small thing. I purposely... Danced around until I had that armor break debuff applied to me because of crumbling armor. So I can use that to heal myself with willpower. If I had quaked at the very beginning of the fight, and if I had that concussion that if I possibly could have shut down that part of the node. So I would have lost, a, lost an opportunity to have free healing. And that's another reason why I was questioning why I used that combat regeneration boost against that Nova fight. Cause I could whatever health I lost, I could have healed it all back in this fight. Um, but you live and learn. We learned two lessons this war, so and it's good. To, that's why you record your fights, whether you plan on posting them on YouTube for other people or not. It's, you have a chance to be self-critical of yourself about what you could have done or what you should do next time. That's how you get better. If I can get better at the game. And I'm not saying I'm the best person out there because there's a lot of people that are very skilled at this game that I, I'm i not even, I can't even hold their drop straps. But um, I would say that I'm above average in this game. So if I have room for improvement, other people have room for improvement as well. Um, so, so again, we're just waking up. We're going to go ahead and go to the left side. So all of these are going to be quite fights. So... It's not really much to commentate about these. I will say that the Mojo fight does get a little tricky because of the um, the um, the hater buffs. You can get bad RNG, but this Immortal Hulk and these Doctor Doom fights are pretty straightforward. There's really not much to commentate on those. So if you want to fast forward, you can. If not, I'll have a little musical interlude.
perfectly with those fights there but here we go now this boss is a rank three apocalypse so he's a very beefy fellow and this awakening ability doesn't really do anything to him as a defender it really helps him more attack wise so so we're gonna apply once again um probably to get better at my boost management but we're gonna go ahead and apply another 30 percent boost and the 15 percent attack boost i probably need to start doing those solo missions once again so i can get more of those solo objectives and re restash some of those smaller boosts um but here we go we got our 200 percent mystic power boost i debate on whether i should use that power start boost because it's not as critical for this fight Cause I, cause I can, I can take a couple of block hits with his uh, SP one, but at the same time he is a rank three, so that kind of factored into the decision. Now you saw I did start with Limbo, so I took a hit, but unfortunately he decided to do a heavy attack, and his heavy attack causes bleed. So not only did I take bleed damage, but if the opponent had Despair Mastery, it actually kept me from recovering some of the lost health, which otherwise I would have been at 100% despite getting hit. But it's just no part, no biggie. So we took a hit to the face, but we survived. So that tells me I could have survived 
some block damage from his SP1 if I didn't use the power start boost. So again, a lesson that I can learn for future wars because those power start boosts are, are pretty precious uh, resources. We have a war going on right now that has an apocalypse boss and I have magic planned for him so at least I'll know and I think he's a rank 2 6 star so at least I'll know for that fight I don't have to use a power start boost so I, that way I can save them unless they get to the point where they give them more like candy I have to kind of treasure those resources because the power start boost really for magic if I see an apocalypse on that that node that you, that you saw earlier uh, on node 25 with the um, kinetic transfer and the footloose, that's where I need it more than the boss. So, and if it gets to the point where I don't have enough of those, then I have to use like alternate counters like, Wall like Warlock. He's pretty good to counter against Apocalypse. But so far with magic, we're doing pretty good. Now, the degree of difficulty is only gonna scale up because he's gonna gain more resistant charges. Now, at this point, I thought about, but it was, I would've had to have AI cooperation for me to pull this off. I thought about the launching the SP3, because what it does, it nullifies all the debuffs on the opponent and it increases that your attack rating for, for during that special attack uh, by a certain amount based off the num number of buffs on the opponent. So in other words, the SP3 will hit real hard if the opponent has a lot of buffs on them. Um, so I didn't know whether or not it would actually take him out at this point, but because I'm pacing myself pretty well just by doing this, because I'm on pace to not time out I was saying to myself, okay, it's not really necessary for me to do that. But if it's a situation where I'm like low on boost, where I can't use a 30% boost, or if I use a 20% boost, then I may practice this, that SP3. And it'll likely be something that I'll experiment in for the off season to see how hard that SP3 really hits when an opponent has a lot of, like they have like 10, of each resist on them, how hard does that SP3 hit? Because I did it for a regular resistor path in 6.3 and it killed them pretty good. So I have to go back and look at the health pool uh, for those fights so that way I can compare that to what a war boss would be. And that'll give me a realistic look to see if I can actually have the SP3 hit hard. But as you can see, we got a minute left. So at this point, my hands were shaking this whole time because of how close this war was. And going into this fight, we actually had a pretty good uh, lead. Really the only way that we could lose this war is if we like didn't finish all the three battle groups. Um, but the reason why I say that is because unfortunately we did not finish all three battle groups which was very frustrating. Uh, there was a Sasquatch boss in BG3 and we didn't have enough active counters for war for him. So we lost because we didn't clear that boss, but we'll get him next time. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please like, share, and subscribe.